gonna keep trying, keep trying. I'm gonna keep trying. Well, now it's been an hour since I woke up.
Hello, friends. I'm Mac Wilson from The Current from Minnesota Public Radio, and I am joined in our studio by Built to Spill. Welcome to St. Paul. Built to Spill. Hi. We've got Mel, Teresa, and Doug. Uh, Doug March, longtime member of Built to Spill, the, uh, the consistent member over the years. And let's start things first with uh, talking with the other two members of the band, because you're new this time around, and you each have respective projects that you've been playing in addition to playing with Built to Spill. So let's start with Mel. Mel, which band do you play with? Uh, I'm in a band called Blood Lemon, and from Boise, Idaho as well. So do you have dates yet upcoming on the tour, or have we you do. played so far? Uh, we haven't played any so far. Well, we did a little bit in our last tour for the spring, um, but for this tour... We're going to join at the end of this month, and then we'll play a little bit in the beginning of September. We have like 10 dates, I think, that we're doing on like the East Coast. Um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, though. We did some touring um, a month ago with a band called Vision Video. That was really fun. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And Teresa, which is, uh, which is your band? Um, I play with a band called Prism Bitch out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we are currently doing a nine-show run uh, as direct opener with Built to Spill. Yeah. Does it get to be a long evening for you playing both the uh, the, the support act and as the headliner it, in one night, or do you even think of it that way? Um, it does. Mostly a time management thing. And since I'm playing drums, there's, you know, making sure I get to bed on time, get some rest. But this is our third go-around of doing it. And for both Mel and I, doing double duty, it just, the endurance kind of builds as you go along. Mm -hmm. So as long as you sleep and eat right, yeah. I think are, are the two things. So Now, Doug, you've played with many, many folks over the years. How, in this case, did uh, Teresa and Mel come into the fold for this incarnation of Built to Spill? Uh, well, um, when I was looking for some new people to play with in Boise, um, Mel was the first person that I reached out to. Um, I'd seen her play in her previous band, Marshall Poole, a couple years before, and you know, thought she was amazing. And uh, so I reached out to her, and then we had a drummer that lived in Boise, and um, we, we played a couple shows, and then I ended up going to Brazil and meeting these Brazilian guys who I ended up touring with for about a year. And then... When that came to a conclusion at the end of 2019, we had just done some Prism Bitch shows, and I had really, you know, fallen in love with uh, Teresa's drumming, and so I asked her to join the crew, and uh, yeah, so we we had a couple rehearsals. We had we had a tour booked for 2020. We had a few rehearsals, and right before we were about to hit the road, everything got shut down, and then. Uh, and then about the time that uh, everyone got vaccinated, we started playing together again. We played our first show in July of last year, and we've been playing pretty regularly since then. We've been hitting it pretty hard for uh, you know, yeah, for, the, for this last year. Tell me a little bit about your time in Brazil, Doug. Um, in my personal experience, I have no experience with Brazil, but in playing various artists on the air on The Current, I found that Portuguese names are like the trickiest to say. I feel like I never get exactly <laughs> the right pronunciation. So tell us a little bit more about your time in Brazil and how is your Portuguese now? Um, Brazil was amazing. Uh, I've, you know, I've traveled a little bit in the band. We haven't done a lot of overseas stuff. We've been to Europe a few times and Australia, and, um, but we've never been to south of the border, never been to Asia or anything like that. Um, but the trip to Brazil was really great because um, usually we're on tour and we're just the group, you know, and maybe a tour manager from somewhere. And, you know, you meet people every day. But this time we had a kind of a crew. We met, I met um, this woman, Isa um, uh, Giorgetti, who um, she was kind of trying to get us booked over there for about a year. And we'd been talking to each other. And she's the one who introduced me to... Le Almeida and Ottawa, the the people that I ended up playing with. Um, and so she kind of took us under her wing and showed us around. And we got to spend a little extra time there because we had to rehearse and stuff. So um, our sound guy, Lawrence, and I went over there and had a great time. Both of us just loved it. Um, 
for lots of reasons. But I think that was the main thing, just that we found these people that were like kind of kindred spirits in the music scene that, you know, became the band and good friends, friends for life. Um, and the, but there's a lot of great things about Brazil, a lot of great music, beautiful, you know, good food and just a really sweet culture. I've got good news. Well, there's the Brazilian chain restaurant that's right by First Avenue tonight. Uh. So if you're looking for someone to go, Fogo de Chao is right next door. I don't know if you can necessarily squeeze that in, a, a buffet trip before yeah. uh, <laughs> playing at First Ave. But FYI, there is Fogo de Chao uh, across the street. It's good to know. So that song that you played to open up the set, Fool's Gold, that's the uh, the one that you opened up with. That's from the new record, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. And it's a record, from what I understand, was largely recorded during the pandemic. It was the mixing then, which you had to work on uh, remotely during the pandemic. Uh, do you feel like you... I'm figuring out the right way of putting this. Uh, do you feel like having that much time made you spend more time tinkering around with it? Actually, not really. Um, so yeah, the, this record was made with the Brazilian guys, not with with these two. Mm -hmm. And they we'd finished re, uh, touring uh, 2019 and just spent a couple weeks recording it ourselves in our practice space on a computer. And it was the plan from the get go to just do it ourselves and not go to a studio. So that worked out kind of nice with the whole pandemic. But um, I worked on it by myself a bunch, but I really, I didn't feel super inspired during that time. I was kind of, you know, I don't know. I felt a little bit, um, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't in a very creative place. But the songs, I'd been working on them for, a lot of them for years, and they were pretty well figured out. So there, it didn't really need a lot of inspiration to finish it up, you know, most of, most of it was just kind of just, you know, putting in some time and getting everything done. So no, I didn't, I didn't work it hard. And I also wanted to keep it pretty simple. I didn't want it to be, uh, you know, I didn't want it to be too complex of a record. You know, I kind of wanted it to be sort of simple sounding. Uh, the new records on the way called when the wind forgets your name, that's an, an evocative title. I need to start thinking about the, the metaphors behind that one. Was that a slogan or a proverb that uh, cycled around your brain? I don't remember how it started or where it came from. It's a lyric in one of the songs, and so I picked it out from that. But I can't remember what I was thinking. Oh, you know what? It's a song called um, Elements, and each verse kind of talks about a different element. And so there's the, the wind one is that one. Mm. And it's kind of, you know, it's a little bit of uh, maybe like a play on the Jimi Hendrix song, The Wind Cries Mary, you know, the wind knowing, knowing someone's name, not knowing someone's name. The first song that you put out from the new record is Gonna Lose, and I've enjoyed that one quite a bit. I like the video, too. For, it's hard for me to articulate exactly what it is, but it's like exactly what I would expect uh, a Built to Spill video to look and sound like. So <laughs> you, the animation does a really good job of matching that feel. Who did you get to animate the video? Oh, that's sweet to hear. Um, it's Jordan Minkoff, and he's uh, he's he, he played in a band called Slam Dunk, who we met maybe ten years ago, a Canadian band, and became my favorite band. Um, and then he made a lot of videos for his band and for other people's bands, and um, he has a great sense of humor, and um, he really gets our band. So I'm, I'm glad that you felt that it fit with Built to Spill, because I feel that way about him. Like, the things he does make sense. In us. particular, it was uh, it, your song Living Zoo. Mm -hmm. I could easily picture Living Zoo with a very similar video to that. Yeah, he did that, and, um, and the follow-up, the Never Be the Same video. And then he's done two videos for this record, and he's working on a third one. And he has a, a project called Wet Face. It's just him by himself on a keyboard and singing and uh, great songs. And really, he's just a really silly amazing guy so and we're doing some shows with with him too when blood lemon joins us on tour so when we first started playing gonna lose this is like from a radio dj perspective we played it's like a two and a half minute song and i look at the track listing and i'm like well it, this has got to be like conventional wisdom where we play an edit of it and then the the studio version is longer like it, probably nine minutes or so but no it's it's like two and a half minutes on the album too so doug i'm curious in your brain, how do you know which songs 
are going to be the ones, okay, this is the one that's going to go into a really lengthy instrumental coda, and which ones are going to be really concise and uh, poppy, dare I say? How do you even get your brain going? Like, which is going to be the ones with a big solo? Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think for the most part, I feel like I want to keep them all short, and I try to edit them to get everything I want across as short as possible. And sometimes I feel like it takes a while to get everything I want to get across, you know. Um, but I don't know. You know, there's no real... Uh, some, sometimes it's like a, a, a reaction, you know. If I've, when, when, when we make a record with kind of short songs and the next one I want to make them sprawl a little bit and then that, you burn out on that and you go back the other way. I feel like there's a little bit of a pattern like that with... You know, just reacting to the thing you've already done and you're either tired of it or you've, you, you know, for whatever reason, maybe the music that I'm listening to at the time is more concise. So I want to emulate that. I think you'll appreciate this, that occasionally I host the request show here on The Current. And probably one of the most reliable requests is Built to Spill's cover of Cortez the Killer, which the, people want to hear that on the air. I think it's been done once or twice that we've actually played it, but it routinely exceeds 20 minutes in length. I'm curious, in the history of Built to Spill, in terms of minutes, what do you think is the longest any one song has gone on? What's, <laughs> what's the longest you've got? <laughs> minutes? Minutes. I think like, Hours. I don't know, Hours. 700, I think, minutes? Okay. Probably the longest one we've done. That's, that's fair enough. We are in the current studio with Built to Spill and want to give a big <laughs> thanks to... <laughs> Sorry, I'll start that over again. Sorry. It's okay. 700 minutes. I'm, I'm putting that together in my brain, but honestly, I believe you. So, 700. <laughs> that was not true. I don't know. Never, I've never done anything for 700 minutes in a row. I could probably sleep for 700 sleep? minutes in a row at this yeah. point, but yeah. We're yeah maybe. So, cool. Built a spill in the current studio, Doug, Teresa, Melanie, thank you for taking the time to stop by today. I want to give a thanks as well to our producer, Rachel Francis, to our engineers, Eric Romani and Evan Clark, uh, for photographing as well. And they have a song at the end of the set, uh, Conventional Wisdom, that uh, I was thinking about earlier, and I'm really thrilled to hear you play it. So thank you for stopping in again. Thanks, Mac. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Mac.